Buying a new home is an exciting time, but one reality is that new properties come with new neighbors, and that means new community conflicts are possible. Joining us for more is CTV Chief Financial Commentator Paddy Leverett-Reed. She's brought a guest with her today. I have. He knows the subject very well. He's Claude Borion from the Borion Group at Royal LePage Terre Equity Realty. Uh, thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank Patty, you. Patty, over to you. All right. Well, you know, we've talked about real estate on so many occasions, particularly you and I, Paul. Never once, and I am a serial home buyer, seller, have I thought about the impact of a neighbor. And so, Claude, when I saw your report, uh, you said, you know what, there are a lot of considerations. Sure. So I thought we'd run through some of them and then open it up for mm -hmm. conversation. A tree jerk reaction. <laughs> I love this, but it's true. Yeah, that's a phrase that we uh, coined as we were doing research uh, uh, for this study. And uh, we found that, uh, sure enough, people really do have a tree jerk reaction when it comes to um, conflicts around trees. Um, a professional mediator we engaged uh, for this study uh, told us that more than half of her uh, mediation or dispute resolution cases uh, revolve around trees. How, how complex is it? What are the basic rules about a tree that sits on neighbor A's property but overhangs neighbor B's property and, and if neighbor B has an issue. Sure. Uh, I'm not a municipal uh, planner or lawyer, but um, but I can tell you that uh, people get very emotional about trees. Um, so sometimes it'll have to do with somebody just planting a new tree, trying to do something good for the environment, maybe spruce up the neighborhood and the, street, the streetscape with some greenery and uh, a neighbor won't like where that trees or what that tree might look like 10 years down the road. So they're going to butt in right away. What about trimming limbs that uh, or, or trimming limbs that overhang one property? Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen a lot of uh, bad reactions to that, as well as gathering fruit from uh, from limbs that overhang <laughs> your own property. <laughs> but it's true. I think I'll have an apple from sure. that tree it's on my property. It's on my property, it seems like it's kind of fair. Sure. What about a history of being difficult? I like this. You want to build your dream home mm. in a historical neighborhood, maybe with a very modern footprint. People aren't necessarily going to like that. Yeah, uh, it's true. And, and of course, uh, every municipality deals with that differently. Um, what we've found, the best results are really when you start engaging early on uh, with your neighborhood, your neighbors and the community. Um, if you just go out and you try to make a, a 10,000 square foot home in a, in a typically 3,000 square foot home neighborhood, uh, you're going to get some, uh, some really bad reactions. Uh, but if you knock on the door, if you start to consult with your neighbors and explain why or maybe figure out some compromises, um, you often will have a better result. So isn't part of the problem, though, with this kind of stuff is that people just do something because they know that then some, the city will come along and say, OK, well, you weren't supposed to do it. So, you know, you pay a fine. And so you're as a neighbor, you go, oh, the tree's gone. But now, you know, the, the person who took cut down the tree wasn't supposed to. It was my property. But, you know, here's a thousand dollar fine. Who cares? Right. So the, isn't that part of the problem that goes on with this kind of stuff? You're absolutely correct. So it's um, uh, I think when when people feel that somebody has been a smart aleck, and played uh, uh, within the lines, but really uh, flirting with the exterior of those lines, um, they get, they, they can, there can be some very inflammatory reactions. So um, when somebody knows that they can get away with something, uh, na neighbors aren't stupid. Uh, they're gonna say, you know, the tree was there, uh, uh, you knew that we, it, we cared about it, that this community, you know, revolved around this tree or this streetscape, and, uh, and you kind of went around without telling us or, or consulting with us. That's when the reactions get really bad. And then how do you think that neighbor uh, is going to react if ever, ever they're Asked to uh, to go along with another plan. Now, I by the way, this isn't just about living in a home. It's also about condo disputes. Yes. Um, the serial, I like this, noisy neighbor. Sure. I mean, we've all heard of them, and Absolutely. those who live in a condo have to deal with it. But how do you deal with it if you're moving in? You don't necessarily know that. No, and, and our, our suggested approach to uh, condo buyers is the same as for freehold or, or house uh, buyers in, in anywhere in Canada, is approach the neighbors. Um, as a broker, it's not unusual for us to visit a property multiple times before somebody commits to it so to have do, a chat to do what to get, get a sense of how easily noise passes through the walls that's one thing we actually advise uh, our buyers when they have the ability to do so in certain markets it's not as easy because time is sometimes of the essence but we do advise people to visit properties that they're cons considering buying at different times of the day and different days of the week that's a good because point. different things are going to be happening if you're near a, a railway track for example if you go at uh, noon there may not be much going on mm -hmm. but if you go during rush hour you may get a sense uh, how much the noise or vibration uh, uh, permeates into the property. What about noise that is clearly coming from your neighbor, a neighbor who plays their uh, stereo system loud at uh, five o'clock in the morning? Yeah, uh, depending on how much you want to buy that 
property, uh, whether it's a semi-detached home, um, a townhouse or a condo unit, you may want to reconsider it. Or if you really need that property, and, and I speak from experience that sometimes people just need that property, um, you're going to have to resolve it. If it's in a condo building, you'll be going through the property managers and the condo board. Um, and, and people who are nasty neighbors in those instances have to be very careful because the Condominium Act does allow condo boards um, to apportion costs to the unit owner who's causing a, a nuisance. So what you're saying, Paul, is that I should not be vacuuming at 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> which I thought was entirely okay. Um, McMansions equal McHeadaches. People sure. who want to build a deck or they want to build up. Sure doesn't always work. No, and, and to Paul's uh, point earlier, um, if somebody just decides to make something monstrous or McLovely um, <laughs> uh, without consulting their neighbors, um, it, can, it can cause some real headaches. So at the end of the day, very quickly, all of this can cost you, Paul, anywhere from 7,500 to 19,000 if you're in a house or a condo from three to 10,000. So you gotta beware. Patty, thanks a lot. Thank you for coming you. in. Claude Borian is with the Borian Group at Royal LePage Terre Equity Realty. For more news on personal finance, you can always visit our website, bnmbloomberg.ca slash personal finance. We'll take a break and be right back after this.